the last time we talked, you, you kind of weren't sure what, what your role was going to be. I guess kind of now that we're a little closer, uh, you know, kind of what are you expecting for this season? Um, I mean, we're right at this point right now, we're just all just getting out there, just trying to learn the system, um, you know, learning from different from different positions, you know, just learning the ins and, out, ins and outs of the defense and, uh, you know, just grow each day, get better each day and just start kind of learning each other, build that camaraderie. Um, you know, learn our strengths, our weaknesses, um, getting getting down to communications and things like that. So just taking it step by step, day by day, and just trying to, you know, uh, our goal is to just be one of the top defenses in the league. I know, obviously, you, you like being outside uh, and, and you've played a lot of nickel. Do you think there could be a situation where, you know, you would maybe uh, be at corner and base and in nickel uh, when you guys are in nickel? Like, like, could you bounce back and forth like that? Uh, I mean, yeah, I did it my third year, uh, my first year with Kansas City. But uh, I think it's just all going to depend on, you know, what's best for the team. You know, we got a lot of talented guys in the secondary. Um, you know, just see where everybody's strengths, weaknesses is. And just at the end of the day, just being – putting everybody in a position where we can go out there and win football games on Sunday. So whatever that is for any of us, that's where we want to be. There's also a lot of talk, and you did this in Kansas City, about dropping back to safety. Why do you feel that? Because not everybody can do play those roles. You can line back there. doesn't mean you play back there. But you seem to be able to, be able to do it pretty well. Why do you feel that you can do play both those spots? Um, just ever since I started playing DB, really once I got to Tech, you know, Coach Gray was big on us just learning the ins and out of the defense, not being able to just lock in on one position. And, you know, Coach Harris, he's that same type of coach. He wants everybody to learn the defense, know where everybody is supposed to be. So, even when I'm in meetings, if they're talking to the safeties, you know, the corners, nickels, we're listening, we're learning it. Um, and, you know, Coach Harris, he'll, he'll ask us, ask the corner sometimes about the safeties and ask the safety sometimes about the corner just because at the end of the day, in a long season, you never know what's going to happen with injuries, guys being, guys being down and this and that. You, we want to have that flexibility to go out there on a Sunday and do whatever we need to do to win. And then also during, during this whole, the whole lockdown quarantine period and all that, what was that like for you? What did you do? Was it, was it difficult? Where were you, you know, hold up? Uh, it wasn't too difficult. Um, for me, all I did was work out and golf. Um, you know, go out there in the morning, get my workout in, and then golf the rest of the day just because it wasn't too much to do. But it wasn't too bad. We definitely had to be a lot more cautious, um, you know, working out in the, in the gym and things like that, making sure we're wiping everything down and, and definitely being uh, cautious of that. But still still able to get that workout in, go out there on the field, you know, work drills and things like that. So, you know, I was definitely still able to, to, to keep working. How has it been working with Chris Harris so far? And does it mean more to you to have a former player as your positional coach? Uh, I enjoy it. Uh, you know, just the energy that he comes, even, when, even in Zoom meetings, you know, where, where it's easy to kind of just be laid back and kind of drive, but he still comes with that energy, comes with that passion. Um, you know, it definitely helps having a guy that played it because he, he knows exactly where, you know, where, I, where our heads at, where our mindsets are, you know, what we're seeing, you know, in the games and in practices and, th and things like that. But, you know, he's been, you know, getting us right, teaching us the ins and outs of the system and just being that energy spark for us right now. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to take that energy spark over for him once we're able to start getting out there on the field. And as far as your versatility, um... You know, did you do you watch a lot of tape on other guys who have a similar skill set? Did you um, be it former players or current players? Is that something you do a lot of? Um, I watch my brother a lot, um, but yeah, you just even being around. I feel like it's just certain guys that you get around that you respect that you just learn from them. Um, for me, being in college, it was my brother. Um, you know, once I got to the league, even watching guys like Dunny, J. No, Bree, D. Hall, Swag. You know, just pick picking things that, that they did well, trying to add that to my game. Once I got to Kansas City, learning from guys like like Tyron, you know, Eric Berry, Steve Nelson. So just picking up strengths from, from each player that I've been around and try to just apply that to my game. So it's funny talking to you now versus when we talked to you before the trade to Kansas City, you come back to Washington as, as kind of the veteran, as, as a leader. What's it like for you to be in that role and, and specifically – guy like Jimmy Moreland probably needs to be really versatile. He's a guy that a lot of the coaches have talked about. What do you see in Jimmy? Uh, just his, his mentality. You know, he just got that dog mentality and he's a playmaker. Um, you know, even just – I haven't 
been able to been around, be around him on a daily basis yet, but just watching him on field, the way he likes to compete, um, doesn't shot doesn't shot down from anybody, and uh, you know, for me, just I've always been just trying to trying to be a leader by action, just showing you know how I prepare for Sundays, um, you know, during the week in the weight room and things like that, and just you know make sure make sure that that they see that, so so they know you know the things they have to do besides on Sunday to to be the most productive they can be on on a on a Sunday. All right, switching gears a little bit. Uh, the quarterbacks are always in their own little category, but who's the best golfer on that defense? Best golfer on the defense? Yeah. I don't even know if a, guy, a, a lot of guys golf. Um, I know Jonathan Allen is starting to golf. I don't think he can beat me, though, from what, I'm, from what I've heard. Um, but my biggest thing right now is I told Tress and Dustin that the day I got signed, my main priority was to come back in this locker room and beat them in ping pong. So that's the the the, the focus has has shifted from golf to me being the ping pong champion, and I made that known to them. So I think that's why they got rid of the, I think that's why they got rid of the ping pong table. So yeah, yeah, I was curious about your perspective being a guy who uh, you know you were in this building under Jay, then you leave, and, and now you're back. How how are things different? How is the vibe different? Uh, it's it's way different. Um, and, you know, everybody's still trying to figure it out, but, you know, Coach Rivera, he's just trying to, you know, build that culture, um, you know, kind of just shifting everyone, everyone's mentality. And, uh, you know, I think the, the good thing about it is just everybody's just, you know, trusting him, um, you know, and just going, going full steam ahead and just giving all our trust to him and just, like, like we said, just trying to build that culture, um, a sustainable culture. And, uh, you know, we got to do that day in and day out to build that. So that's what we focus on. All right. I got a golf question too. So have you always been a golfer? Have your brothers or is this like something that it was a quarantine thing and now you're good at it? Nah, I haven't always been a golfer. My brother, Kyle, he, he's, he's been golfing for a while. And uh, a lot of the times we're in Arizona in the off season together. So after we work out, he would go, my first off season there, he would go golf and I would just chill in the crib and I would be bored. So I just start going with him. And I'm so competitive that I'm like, all right, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I need to start so that eventually years down the line, I can beat him eventually. And I'll pro I might stop then, but I don't know. But I definitely got to beat him. I got, I got my work cut in for me, though. So you haven't yet then? I'm not even close. No. Not even close. Obviously, some guys around the league have been opting out of the season. Just curious your thoughts on that and how uh, – and did you contemplate possibly uh, opting out of the season as well? Um, I mean, I respect any guy that, you know, decides to opt out, uh, you know, just focusing on their health and their well-being, you know, especially guys that has families, wives, children, and things like that. So, you know, any guy that, that's putting that first in their life, you know, I definitely respect it. Um, maybe a little bit easier for, decision for me because, you know, not married, don't have a family, don't have kids and things like that. So I live by myself. But, uh, you know, definitely me being cautious with my mother, you know, my nephew and things like that. But. I definitely respect any any person that decides to, you know, opt out for the safety of their family. And I know, obviously, you haven't been around the team per usual the way you would during a normal offseason, but what do you sense is, a, if anything, is different between what's happening now under uh, Ron Rivera versus when you were here the first time with Jay Gruden and that regime? Um, I think just Coach Rivera is just trying to build a different culture. Um, you know, we're, you know, we're just coming in every, every day with the right mentality, um, you know, like Coach – and Coach Rivera, he always makes sure when he talks about culture, he always makes sure he, he says sustainable culture. Um, and, you know, I think all of us is just kind of – the biggest thing right now is just building that trust. Um, you know, Coach Rivera wants to trust us. We want to trust him. And, you know, that's – I think that's our main focus, and that's what we got to build day in and day out. You know, I think that's a good reason why so many of us are happy to be back in the building. Just going with the golf before my serious one. What's what's the best area of your game? Where are you most confident right now? Ah, uh, best area that I'm most confident in. If this was a week ago, I would tell you my driver. <laughs> but I can somehow hit my driver anywhere but straight right now. Okay. Um. Relatable. I would say right now I would say my putting, but. Okay. It always seems to find out once something gets good, the other thing gets bad. So the more I probably focus on my driver, I'll probably start hitting my driver straight and then start three-putting everything. So <laughs> that's golf for you.
Yep, I wish you the best of luck. Three putts are never fun. Uh, so football-wise, I'm wondering, I know you guys just recently got back together. You're still kind of getting used to new players, but have you had any early initial impressions of Chase Young, whether on the field or off the field, how he carries himself? Uh, just as a professional. Um, you know, just – and I haven't been around him too much, but, you know, you see him uh, – I think I saw him after just getting in a couple of sprints today. Um, you know, he just kind of has that – just that vibe when you walk by him, you know, he's just, he doesn't seem like a rookie. Um, seems like a professional. Um, he's hungry. He wants to work, you know, being what well, he's number two pick. Seems like he's not even thinking about that, but he's just thinking about just, you know, being the best player he can be on Sunday. So, you know, that's definitely a good, a good attitude and a good vibe for an energy for a rookie to be carrying around. Quick question. I'm just kind of wondering, have you guys talked a lot as a team or amongst yourselves, whatever about, you know, now that you've got, you've got this, co you know, this disease out here, this virus. And I mean, is there anything about not going out about trying to, to make sure that you're not getting yourselves exposed because now you're all together as a team. Have you talked much about how to do that and how to handle that? Uh, I mean, coach Rivera, you know, I think one of the first things he told us was, you know, when it comes down to the end of the season, it's probably going to be whatever team has been the smartest, you know, outside of the facility, you know, they set up everything in the building, you know, to keep us, safe the best way they know how and you know it's just us to just be professional um just be professional once we get outside the building um you know keep keep ourselves safe keep our family safe and just keeping each other safe and uh you know i think at the end of the day just so many people talk about us being athletes and just whether on the field off the field just being professionals and you know i think even in this in this case it's the same way we just gotta just go about it as a, as a professional do you, are you one of the people who kind of you feel because you've had a little bit of experience that you are maybe one of the more leaders on that and trying to, to monitor that? Or is everyone kind of on their own? Or how does that work? Uh, no, nah, I mean, we're all in it together. Um, you know, if it come, when it comes down to if guys aren't doing the right things off the field and, it, and it's affecting us as a team on a Sunday, it's not just you can go ahead and just do whatever you want. You know, we're all in it together. We all need each other. So, you know, we're definitely, we're definitely police, police ourselves. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll stay on each other, talk to each other. Um, and, you know, that's what, that's what a, good, a good team, a good family does, and uh, just holding each other accountable. Is there one of the one or two things that maybe you took from your two years in Kansas City behind the scenes that were maybe integral and part of building that championship team and championship culture that you can transfer over just from your experience there? Or is it just kind of, you know, every organization is different, every building is different? Uh, no, nah, I think one of the main things that I think I picked up from Kansas City is just like when you're in the building, the work never stops. Um, you know, they always had us doing walkthroughs a little bit early before practice. If we got to get out there five, 10 minutes early, getting out there just to get more reps in. Um, you know, if you're not, if you're in a period and you're not doing nothing instead of just sitting there on the sidelines and just chilling, you know, let's get up, do something. Even if it's just something that's playing catch, doing little ball drills and things like that. Um, you know, I think that was that was probably the biggest thing that stuck out to me. You know, when we were out on that field, it, it wasn't no sitting around. We were working at all times. And, uh, you know, I think that's – I know Coach Rivera, you know, he's already like that. But, uh, you know, it's definitely something that I took from Kansas City. What was your favorite memory when you were here with the Redskins? Was it like the interception against the Niners or the Giants the last second? The interceptions are big, but those last second even bigger. Favorite memory with the Redskins in my two years here. I just said that to give myself more time to think. Um, I would say the Niners interception was the C the Seahawks game. Um, I enjoyed the Seahawks game because I, I remember the defense playing big, um, you know, the whole game. And then I think – I think it was one of the last series, the defense, we didn't, we didn't hold, our, hold our own. And the offense kind of came back through and bailed us out. They, they had been struggling the whole game. And, you know, they just stayed in there, kept battling, kept fighting, and came in there, to, to, came in there and, and made plays at the end to help us win the game. Um, so that was the first, and I liked my interception. So. Obviously, you won a Super Bowl. That's the, the main goal. But how would you evaluate your performance in Kansas City? Just – how do you feel like you played over those two years? Uh, it was – I think I did pretty good. Uh, you know, definitely never to my expectations. Um, you know, I think just the 
the, the different challenges each year I was there. Um, you know, first and second year, just playing only nickel and then going from playing outside and base to, to inside and, uh, and sub packages, which is an adjustment just because you got to make sure you're prepared for both. Um, and then my second year having the surgery. Um, and I think the second year after breaking my thumb, the second year in a row, you know, I was definitely a little bit more cautious, but, you know, Tyron that came in hot, you know, with that safety nickel role. So having to also play that role, which was a big adjustment for me. So it was a lot of things that just a lot of adversities that I was facing, um, but just battling through them. And, uh, you know, I think that was the the beauty for me, especially like the late playoff run in the Super Bowl, just knowing that all the adversities I had pushed through throughout the season with the thumb, you know, going out there and never playing safety in my life and going out there and, and late in the season and playoffs games. So just pushing pushing through those adversities just kind of just, you know, show me that I can fight through anything during the course of the season. Even before the, the second thumb injury, during your second year, the uh, you weren't seeing the field as often. But was there anything like, did you feel more refreshed not playing that many snaps? Or how, how did that kind of reduce workload, maybe help you or hurt say you? That, say that one more time. How did, you know, your, your snaps were a little bit down your second year, even before the thumb injury, just how did that kind of reduce role or you were asked to do different things? Did that help or hurt your game? How, how would you kind of evaluate that? Uh, my snaps weren't down before my thumb injury. Um, thumb injury, it was just – uh, if you want to say down, it was just – they had just decided just like to – You played like 100% of the snaps your first year. It was like – Yeah, my first year in KC, I did base corner and then sub nickel. And then my second year, they kind of just let me focus on nickel, um, especially with the new system and things like that. Um, but it felt it felt good out there, um, you know, especially first, first two or three games. You know, I think us as a defense, we were just learning the ins and outs of the system, learning what we could get away with, what we couldn't get away with. And, uh, you know, once I got hurt, it was able – I wasn't able to out there – I wasn't, be, wasn't able to be out there learning the ins and outs, this, that, on the field. But I was in the film room being able to learn the ins and outs. And uh, us as a, as a whole defense, we were just able to hit, hit our shot at the right moment. As far as how things have gone so far in practice, Chris Harris told us that you guys are all just being called defensive backs, not cornerbacks, not safeties. He's going to move you guys wherever you're most comfortable. So far, where do you feel like you've been most comfortable in the practices? Um, corner and nickel. Um, you know, playing corner my whole life, playing corner, you know, at Tech all the time. Even my first two years here, um, you know, in, in practice playing a little bit of corner, playing nickel, you know, the whole time I've pretty much been in the league. So anytime I'm at corner and nickel, it feels, it feels comfortable for me. He mentioned the fact that, you know, obviously Jimmy Moreland is somebody that he's very high on favoring the row. How have they been, like, how have you seen them being utilized? How do you feel like they've done so far in the practices? Just what have you seen so far and how you guys being used around? Uh, all of it's just learning, um, you know, just, you know, kind of everybody just getting on board, you know, learning, not just focusing on themselves, not just saying, oh, I want to play this position, so I'm only worried about this. But, you know, we're, we're in there rotating with each other, you know, asking each other questions. Um, and, you know, everybody's just open, just learning the system, knowing that, you know, at the end of the day, we're gonna, they're going to put us in, in, in places where we're trying to go out there and win, and win football games on Sunday. So, you know, just the open mindset that everybody has right now, the willingness for everybody to learn, learn the defense and, and just get each other better mentally right now.